Once known by the water source for which it was named, artisans, animals and alcohol have flowed through Clerkenwell for generations. As its name suggests, Clerkenwell was once the location of the Clark's Well, a medieval water source popular with those looking for an alternative to the polluted Thames Tipple. The well was supplied by the Fleet, a once mighty river originating in Hampstead Heath that supplied many of the wells throughout the Middle Ages in London. However, as the city's population swelled, so the river became dirty, polluted and unloved, and it was eventually rooted underground as a sewer, where it still flows to this day. It may be all but gone from view today, but the Fleet certainly hasn't been forgotten. The streets around Clerkenwell still follow its path and for those who know where to listen, it can still be heard from beneath this very grate. It wasn't just the river that developed a reputation for filth. Throughout much of the Middle Ages, Smithfield in the south of the district was known as a hotbed of vice, fights and executions. Perhaps the most celebrated person to visit Smithfield and never leave was Scottish folk hero William Wallace, who in 1305 was dragged here by horses before being hanged, drawn and quartered. Smithfield provided the perfect location for one of London's oldest markets, in operation for over 800 years. At its height, over 1.5 million animals were brought here to be traded or slaughtered. In the mid-19th century, architect Sir Horace Jones, who would later go on to construct Tower Bridge, was tasked with designing a building to house the new market. Completed in 1868, the Central Market is a masterpiece to Italian-inspired architecture. North of Smithfield, along Farringdon Road, lies Ray Street, another infamous spot best known for its associations with violence. Here you could once find bear baiting, sword fighting and even female fist fighting. There really was something for everyone. And for those looking to wet their whistle after a busy day's brawling, Clerkenwell had you covered. The 18th century saw a boom in gin production. This gin craze was aided by the New River, built by Hugh Middleton, which despite actually being a canal, was hugely successful in bringing clean water back to the area. This fresh water supply, along with gin's tax-free status, convinced one in four households to brew their own gin. Unlike today's fancy botanicals though, your average Georgian gin swiller had to make do with a gin topped up with, wait for it, turpentine to make it more palatable. It may have started with a well, but by the 19th century, Clerkenwell could lay claim to being the font of all knowledge too. This so-called greenhouse of invention produced Maxim's machine gun, Marconi's electric telegraph, and countless other dynamos, transformers, torpedo engines, and speedometers. It wasn't just machinery that was being mastered either. In 1847, Goswell Road-based confectioner Tom Smith arrived on the festive market with a bang when he invented the world's first Christmas cracker. The bang of expectation, as Tom called them, soon took off and by the 1890s, his company was employing more than 2,000 people. Situated in the heart of Clerkenwell, on the former site of the UK's first 24-hour nightclub, a one-time haunt of Madonna and Bono, sits Turnmill. The building's curved design is both form and function a direct response to the movement of people around the site, which has just elevated with the recently opened Farringdon Crossrail nearby. Clerkenwell's quintessentially robust yet refined warehouse buildings provide the guiding template, whilst handmade bricks have been specially made to be sympathetic with the neighbouring Grade 1 listed Old Sessions House. It's a faithful consideration of Clerkenwell's past whilst redefining contemporary office design. <laughs>